Well, even before the president announced his selection of Judge Gorsuch, Democrats in Congress were saying they plan to resist his confirmation to the end. One of those is California Congressman Eric Swalwell. As a member of the House, he'll play no role specifically in the confirmation process. But two days ago, he was calling for Democrats to resist the pick, which he characterized as extremist. Immediately after the pick, he tweeted that, quote, America needs to know whether Judge Gorsuch will show more respect for women, Muslims, and voters than the president nominating him. Congressman Swalwell joins us from the studio tonight. Congressman, thanks a lot for joining us. Thanks for having me in the studio, Tuck. It's a little weird to call a guy extremist before you know who he is. Well, it, the, it is in practice with Donald Trump's uh, extremist views, whether it's on women, whether it's on Muslims, whether it's on voting rights. And so what Americans want to know right now is, is this nominee going to show more respect for women, more respect for Muslims, and more respect for voting rights than the president nominated him? So, I mean, but it sounds like you think you know the answer already. No, I think this nominee deserves the hearing that Justice Garland never got. Right. Well, I think that, that's fair, but, but you were saying, and, and I, I don't think it's a crazy point, but weren't you just saying the other day that you need to resist before you know anything about the guy, his background, any decision that he has written, anything about him? Just we, the generic guy should be resist. We need to resist Resisted. President Trump's uh, extreme views. And so right now we need to know uh, whether uh, Justice Gorsuch whether he believes that the government belongs in a women's uh, doctor's office when uh, she's making a decision about her health care, whether the government belongs in a patient's bedside who's terminally ill. She, he has written a lot uh, about opposing uh, the right to die for terminally ill patients, and people want to know. You know well, he actually hasn't ruled on any abortion cases, but he, he did write uh, in, in a book of ethics this, and I just want to know if you agree with this or not, and I'm quoting him directly. All human beings are intrinsically valuable and the intentional taking of human life by private persons is always wrong. Do you believe that? All human beings are intrinsically valuable. However, Roe v. Wade says that a woman has a right to make a decision about her own health care. Okay, but, but I'm not asking about Roe v. Sure Wade. That. I'm asking you to assess what he has said here. Not about Roe v. Wade, but just a general statement. Uh, all human beings are intrinsically valuable. You agree with that. The second part is the intentional taking of human life by private persons is always wrong. Do you Two agree of the with most that or not? personal decisions a person can make is a woman with her doctor about her own body and a person who's terminally ill about whether they want to die in peace. And he has chosen that the government uh, should intervene. Are you going to answer my question? The intentional taking of human life by private persons is always wrong. Now, if you can't agree on that, the Constitution says that a woman has a right what do you to think? Make no, I'm talking about women's rights. I mean, yeah. t intentional taking of human life by private persons is always wrong. That's what he said. And I just want to know if you agree with that statement or not. What he has shown in his legal career... <laughs> are, you really he, are you yeah. really afraid to say yeah. the intentional taking of life is wrong? No, of course not. I was so a prosecutor. I prosecuted people for intentionally taking life. But what you won't I agree saying, with this because you're afraid of the abortion lobby and like, ooh, you're anti-abortion no. if you're against the intentional taking of human life? I mean, come I on. believe a woman has a right to make her own decision about her own health care. Do you that think it is the taking of a human life, abortion? I, I think that right now, at viability, uh, before viability, a woman should be able to make her own decision. After viability, in the case of her own psychological health, in the case of rape or incest, she should also be able okay, to but, but make that decision. Okay, but is it taking of human life? That is a woman's personal decision. Okay, well, what do you think? Do you think it's the, I'm not asking about the decision. I mean, is it human life or not? What do you think? She, she's terminating something that she does not want, and that's her own choice. Okay, but do you think it's human life? Do I think, I think at viability, a baby, you know, but should before be that, it's decided not human. by the woman. She's the one who has to have it. But you, you brought it up. That's yeah. why I'm pressing yeah. you. But yeah. do you think before viability, it's a human life or something else? I, I think it's, it's not viable yet, Tucker. But it's, it's a human life. courts have decided you're not gonna, it's a woman's decision. You're not going to answer my decision. question now yeah. or ever, I, I suspect. Yeah. But you should, because it's a basic yeah. question, I think. Yeah. Okay, so here's uh, what you wrote. I hate to do this gotcha. Yeah, you wrote this, but right. now you say this, but it's kind it's of interesting. my job. March 16th, you wrote this, and I'm quoting, with national security issues before... March 16th, 2016? 2016, yeah. Wow. We, we do some research right, on this show. Right. With serious national security issues before the president, nothing would comfort our enemies more than to not confirm the Supreme Court nominee. Hashtag do your job. Yeah, Merrick Garland. Yeah. He was a mainstream nominee. Right. He should have gotten at least a hearing, right? Don't you think? I actually kind of think so, yeah. I mean, I'm for, I'm for hearings. I think you should assess people in the merits. I kind of do think that, actually. And this judge should get a hearing, too. Yeah. But, but do you think that it would comfort our enemies if th the Senate doesn't seat this judge and we have an opening on the court? If the Senate does not give this judge a hearing, yes. I think that, too, would comfort our enemies. Now, no, 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 but that's, Trump... that's not what you Hold on. That's not what you wrote. You didn't say give him a hearing. You said nothing would comfort our enemies more than to not confirm him. And do you feel that way about this guy, or is it just totally situational? It's only Democrats. A mainstream judge. And the jury is still out. No, on... you didn't say mainstream judge. I mean, do you think yeah. that... What, so what do you think our enemies... Th what do you think give our me enemies 160. Think... <laughs> a good line. But what do you think our enemies think of this? I mean, if Democrats yeah. go out and say, no, under no circumstances, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, but I'm against him. I think Americans think that this president has the thinnest margin, one that's thinner than his skin, than any president in recent history. He lost the popular vote uh -huh. by three million votes. 
So he should at least get 68 votes in the Senate. President Obama had 60 more electoral votes in his first term, hmm. won the popular vote, and his first nominee, she got 68 votes in the Senate. That's a good So, but I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying. It makes a kind of sense, but if you think about it, it doesn't. It kind of falls apart. I mean, President Clinton never got to 50% of the popular vote. The majority of the country didn't vote for but him. But he won it. Well, Trump won it. You know, no, okay. he didn't win the popular vote. No, but he won the election. And actually, it's not, the election is not based, as you know, since you're an office holder, on the popular vote. It's electoral vote. Sure. But the point is, if it's a moral question, Clinton never got to 50%. And there were people who said, oh, he's not legitimate. But I always thought, that's so stupid. He won the election. So why doesn't the same standard apply to Trump? Because you don't like Trump, I guess, right? I think it's about mandates. I think, you know, if you, so you don't overwhelmingly mandate, won the popular vote, if you overwhelmingly won the electoral college, as President Obama did, he still put a consensus candidate forward who got 68 votes. So there are degrees of victory? I, I don't remember this in the manual. Is this in the Constitution? Like, you're president, but you're really president if you win more? Like, what's the standard? <laughs> I, I think our country right now could use a consensus candidate. He deserves that hearing, and we need to answer these questions about what he feels about okay. women, what he feels about patients, how he feels about voting rights. Do you, really, th do you really think, I mean, let's just, can we just be real? Yeah. For, I know we're on TV, yeah. but if someone is opposed to abortion, if someone believes it's the taking of human life, that's their personal a lot view. of people do. Yeah. If you think it's actually killing somebody, you're not going to be for it being legal. You're just not. It doesn't make any sense, okay, rationally. But that doesn't mean you're against women. A lot of women feel that way. I know a lot of women who don't think abortion should be legal because they think it's murder. Are they against women? Like, and let's be real. It's a personal view. A lot of people at my church at home in Livermore, California, they hold an opposing view to me. Are they but against he's women? A judge. He's a judge. And if he can't follow the law and he wants to overturn a law that says a woman can make her own health care decisions, that's a problem. He's going to have to answer What do you mean? You're for overturning all kinds of laws. What about Citizens United? You're for overturning that? Through the constitutional process. Okay, but yeah. what if this judge, through the constitutional process, was for overturning Roe v. Wade? All of a sudden, he's some kind of moral criminal? Well, he's supposed to be not an activist judge, but someone that follows the law, and I hope he does Well, that. but if he was for overturning Citizens United, he wouldn't be an activist judge. He'd be for the people, right? He can Let's hold, set a standard yeah, and stick to yeah. it. How's that? He can hold his own personal opinions, but he has to carry out the precedent that has already been set. Okay, and that but, says a woman, okay. rights to choose should not but be... But I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to be consistent yeah. here, just for fun. Yeah. So you think it's wrong to try to overturn Roe v. Wade, but it's totally okay to try to overturn Citizens United. Why is that? If you go through the constitutional okay, process... Okay, but on both sides, if you go through the constitutional process, it's fine. So it's okay okay to overturn Roe v. Wade if you go through the constitutional process. It, they can try and they will fail because the well, majority let's say they did. of women okay, in this country right? and the majority of people in this country don't believe in that. Okay. They, can, they can undertake that exercise. I'm, I'm trying, I don't think it'll I'm go trying anywhere. so yeah. hard. I'm not even a lawyer. No. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, last question. Yeah. The, the so-called nuclear option, yeah. um, the filibuster, yeah. and I think most people agree it's good to have some unfortunate name. Partis yeah, it is yeah. an unfortunate name. So let's drop it. The filibuster is there for a reason, and it's to it's to try to convince more than just your party to get on board with the big decision, right. like confirming a Supreme Court justice. So Democrats, when they say even before anyone's been nominated, we're against this and we're going to fight it no matter what, what they're really saying to the Republicans is we dare you to get rid of the filibuster. Do you really want to go there? I mean, is it worth it? I'm not going to speak for the senators. But what I do you think, think? I think he deserves a hearing. And if he cannot receive at least 68 votes or, heck, say two-thirds, the Democrats should probably block him. Huh. But, I mean, you know what's going to happen when people behave in an unreasonable way. And you say the Republicans were unreasonable at Merrick Garland. And, okay, fine. I think that's, you know, maybe they were. But continuing to be unreasonable and saying we think your nominee is an extremist or hates women or hates Muslims, even before we know his name... Isn't that kind of accelerating the cycle of stupidity and extremism that's really hurting us? I will give this nominee a chance. I want to learn but more. But you attacked him before you even knew who he was. I attacked President Trump, who has exercised he nothing didn't. but extremism. You said over we got to resist week. this guy. No, we have to resist President Trump's extreme agenda. And if this individual wants to interfere with a woman's rights to choose and overturn uh, Roe v. Wade, then that should be resisted. Is it a law on the Democratic side that you have to kind of stick to the talking points this closely? <laughs> like, did you, like, why don't no. you do abortion? I mean, like, what, what's wrong with that? It's, it's about abortion. It's not about choice or a woman's rights. It's, it's about this procedure, and some people think it's immoral, and some people don't. So why don't I just call it that? I, I would ask a woman. I don't think she views it uh, as harshly as you do. I well, think so, it's something no, very personal. A lot of women do. I, was, I saw the March for yeah. Life was walk right past our building, and it was tons of women, maybe mostly women. But it's a personal decision, and the law I know, but let's just call it, shouldn't we just call it what it is? We should call it the rule of law. <laughs> okay. Okay, you said the other day that... The president, President Trump's um, ban, a temporary ban, 180-day ban uh, for visa holders from seven yeah. countries coming here was, quote, immoral. Why was that immoral? You know, refugees have helped our country as much as our country has helped refugees. And really? this is, we, we should call it 
I'm tell tell me specifically how. Sure. My chief of staff is a refugee. He came over here from Vietnam on a raft. Uh -huh. and Started as an intern, first in his family to go to college. Oh, one of the refugees that your governor, Jerry Brown, tried to keep out of California in I, 1976? I'm not gonna, I wasn't I was alive. there. I wasn't alive I, in 1976. I watched it. Okay. Yeah. okay. But, but look, here's the point. The United States has a right to determine who comes sure. here, right? Okay. So it would be fair, and it's certainly within the context of American history, for a president to say, you know, we have reasons for not wanting a lot of people to come to this yeah. country now. That's not an immoral thing to say, is it? But it's a religious test because the only exceptions are for religious minorities. And of those seven countries, there's no religious minority that's not... Well, if it was a religious so test, it wouldn't... wouldn't see, I don't really understand a lot of arguments that I'm hearing yeah. in the political sphere recently, but one of the most confusing is, this is outrageous because he didn't include Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Jordan, okay, and the other side, it's a Muslim ban. So the biggest Arab country is Egypt. Yeah. Saudi Arabia has an awful lot of Muslims in it. In fact, it's the seat of Islam. If he doesn't ban people from those countries, how could it be a Muslim ban? Well, the, the refugees are coming from the seven uh, countries that Well, sure, but he didn't ban anybody on. from Saudi Arabia, which is the central country in Islam. Yeah, I'll, I'll focus on who he banned, and there's no Muslims who are minorities. So they would never be allowed to come over under the one exception that he carved out. So that is only benefiting people who are not Muslims. It's a ban well, of Muslims. And he can... Well, it's not a ban of Muslims, yeah. because Saudis can still come and Malaysians to, can still the come. The Muslims in those seven countries. The, okay, the Muslim, but wouldn't a cleaner, more accurate way to say it be the, the residents, the citizens of those countries? It's not a Muslim ban, because yeah. it's not banning people based on the fact they're Muslim. They're banning yeah. them based on their country of origin. And I'll no? just say, Tucker, we're less safe because of it. I, I've wait, wait, hold on. I just want to address your demagoguery really quick. Region. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're calling it a Muslim ban. I just want you to concede that's not really a fair thing to no, say. No, it's a Muslim ban. But we're less safe because but of But we're it. not banning all Muslims. So many of our allies have taken on refugees. We need them to fight terrorism. Mm. And if they don't see us as a team player, they're not going to cooperate. Now, I know we don't and do this inspires the enemy, by the way. This right. feeds the They're really going to hate us now. This feeds the myth. And they'll be able to use this to recruit yeah, that bet. Americans hate Muslims. And we don't. Yeah. We but, believe uh, I bet ISIS is going to yeah. be mad. They may want to start suicide bombing after this. So let me ask you this, though. How do you think, you mentioned other countries are allies yeah. taking in refugees. How do you think the, the refugees taken into Germany have affected Germany? Been a good thing for Germany? Look, we have intense vetting here. What has happened in no, Germany is not No, no, but I just want to know what, okay. what They you, should what, follow what, the vetting that we What about France? Well, let's talk about Jordan. Jordan has been a, a relatively safe place. They've taken over a million refugees. I'm meeting with the king uh, tomorrow. Jordan's about and to explode because the refugees have stayed. Uh, Jordan is actually... For 50 uh, years? It's on an upward glide path, uh, Tucker. It's, it, it, it's refugees are overwhelming want, them. Are you really arguing that Jordan's better because of its refugees? No, I'm, I'm arguing that Jordan's <laughs> yes. better because of its king's leadership, but he depends yeah, on the, the United refugees States under control. to be a faithful partner in that. Yeah, well, and we should help Jordan. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely, it's important. But if we're saying the, no refugees, just go to Jordan, why would the, Jordan, no, why but, would the Jordanian okay, king but I'm asking you a, a more relevant question, which is Jordan has been destabilized by refugees. They've been a disaster for Jordan. Ask the king. And if no one they've else helps with refugees, they've been a disaster go for Germany. They've been a disaster yeah. for France. They've been a disaster for Holland. They've been a disaster yeah. for Scandinavia, specifically Sweden. So if it's been a disaster for all these other countries, why do we want that? Because we all have a part to play. Because if they or don't... Or take our lumps? Because why? No, we should vet them. They should go through screening. But why, why, if it hasn't worked for months. anybody else, why would we want to do it? I think our vetting so far has been pretty good. Well, why would we want to? If I watch you burn your hand, you're like, oh, I have good medical care. I'm like, yeah, you may have good medical care, but I don't want to burn my hand. I'm not going to put my hand yeah. on the stove. I think screen refugees, we should open up uh, our country to them just as others have. Because if we don't, it's a very selfish thing, and it alienates us from the people but, and the countries that we need to fight terrorism. But those countries... It's short-sighted. Uh, short-sighted, for 50 years they've taken in refugees in those countries, and it's hurt those countries. So why would it, we want a piece of that? Why would that... You really look at Germany and like, you know what, I want to do that. Sweden, that's a great job, Sweden. I want a little bit of that here. Do you really think that? Yeah. I, I, again, I would argue our screening process uh, is the tightest uh, of anyone that I've looked at. I think we could take more as long as we're screening them correctly, and it will help our allies uh, in this fight. Right now, they're looking at us and saying, the United States, they're not really in it for anyone but themselves, and that is going to make us less safe. Man, I just want to make sure they respect us. Congressman, great to see you. Yeah, you too. Thanks Tucker. a lot. Thanks for having me on.